So whenever you're handling sense, you might want to have an easier workflow that really suits what you like to do more often. So in this video, I will show you some of the way I have customized my sense menu, uh, the way that fits best for my needs. In, straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and I made this example for today. <music> That's the overall idea. So in the actions menu, you can access the menu editor and you can edit most of the menus in Reaper. I have tried to customize some of them and I feel confident enough right now to show you a couple of them. In this case, we will be editing the Sense Extended Mixer context. I have divided it by several groups and the way you edit this one is maybe you want to add an action copy selected track Sense and I go and search for that one. I might want to add that I will leave a link in the description on how to install the SWX extensions and the RIA pack because all of these actions are under and they don't come with Reaper just on a fresh install. So you select the action and you will see that these two buttons change to select and select and close instead of run and run and close. So if I select this one, you will see that it will add up to the menu. And if I apply it and open that menu, it will show up right here. If I remove it and apply it, it won't be here anymore. So we will be working with this. A couple of things that might sound silly, but are useful for a couple of people are knowing the track routing section. So even though many of these actions, you can do them with command or control in PC or with option and shift with option alt or alt or shift. Some of these actions require a couple more buttons and they might be faster. So if I'm sending this key track into this, into this course delay, You can hold Option or Alt and left click. And the first light is going to be a different color on your own Reaper because it's theme based. <clears throat> and whenever the first light is off, it's not sending to the master track that could be the folder containing it or the master track that's actually the master out. So now we are only listening to the delay. The second light, it's to let you know that the track has some sense assigned to it. And the third light means that the track has some receipts assigned to it. I have access to this menu with a show with right clicking show track route window, and I can handle and create new sense right from this menu, new receipts from this here, flip the polarity, pan it, make it mono, leave it stereo, mute it, unmute it, change the gain, assign MIDI things, open the envelope. But one thing that might be useful is that if you're working with reference tracks, you might want to add it on your session and you might want to add a hardware output to that track and disable the parent send. That way it will go straight into the speakers and it won't go through anything else within your session. The second action right here is go to send destination track. Sometimes a send is really far away within the session. So you can just hit this and it will send you right to it. Let me put it really far away and let's go to that send destination track. And there we go. So sometimes that's a fast way to navigate your session. Now the second group has pretty much the, sec the same action with copy paste, select a track, sends and receives. This works because you can also just click and drag a send from one channel to another. You can do that, but sometimes you have several sends from one track to another. And in, in just in the sake of saving some time, you can use copy selected track sends and paste them or copy receives and paste uh, receives. Why receives? Because maybe you could just duplicate the track, erase all of the effects chain, assign new effects, and it's already receiving the same tracks. But if for whatever reason you did it another way and you created a new track first and you built the effects chain, maybe you just want to go back, copy selected receives to selected tracks. On the third group, I have a mute all sends from selected tracks and mute, mute and unmute sends and receives for selected tracks. So you could do this with a hotkey using only shift and left click, and that's fast. But sometimes you will have a lot more sense from one single channel, especially when you're using several monitoring headphones outputs, or maybe you're doing some sort of live situation where you need several outputs and you're handling with that kind of things. <clears throat> 
So sometimes you want some kind of panic button and you want to mute all of the sends to something or mute all of the receipts. And it's useful. I have used it more than enough to still keep it there on the menu. Group number four, uh, solo send. In the same scenario that maybe you have five effects because you're comparing effects and you're trying out a plugin and you're not sure which reverb or delay you want uh, to keep forever, you might want to just right click and set solo send for just one, for just two, for just five. And that's a much faster way to navigate and switch between sending tracks. And once you select whatever you like the most, you can just right click and ag again and use this action, remove muted track sends from selected tracks. That way all of them are gone except for the one you like the most. I also have an action to remove all of the sends from the selected tracks if I'm not sure what's going on and I lost control of my session. And in the last, last group, I have these actions that I don't use as much, but they still could be useful. Uh, I might be removing them soon, but in case you like them, there they are. Remember that you can create sends that's handled post fader. That means that the fader affects the send and the amount of signal or instrument that another track is receiving. Pre fader, but post effects. That means that the fader won't affect the amount of the send, but it will still be modified by all of these effects up here. And pre fader, pre effects. That means at the very top, top, top of the track, whatever you have in this media item is going to go straight into another track because maybe you need some parallel processing that's completely different for whatever reason. And just to visualize this idea a bit more, you can go into the view menu, into the track wiring option and you will run into this big window that's kind of messy and <clears throat> just to make it a little bit clearer what will happen is that if i change the send of the reverb pre-fader you will see that it's right before the fader <clears throat> if i change it pre-fader pre-fx it's going to go even before these two it's another way for students even to visualize what's going on with the signal flow or if you're trying to understand a little bit better what's going on you can also access to this wiring diagram because signal flow is really important to handle music production, and audio production. So I'm sorry for making these two short videos, but I promise I will come back with my full in-depth videos and a new season of whole new things to talk about. <clears throat> but I'm still recovering from whatever hit me. If you like these kind of videos, be sure to comment, like, subscribe, and do all of those things that people on YouTube say. And straight from Mexico City, my name is Juanchis, and thanks for listening.